Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. You and your friends get trapped in an abandoned mansion and discover you're inside a game. To get out of it, you will need to collect several items that are scattered around the house while running away from a blue demon that feeds on humans. Today we will recap the live action story of Ao Oni from 2014 and Ao Oni version 2.0 from 2015. Anna is a high school teenager who recently lost her brother, Naoki, in a car accident. Police were still investigating whether the boy's death was accidental or intentional, but the girl kind of already knew the answer. While walking through the streets, she spots Shun, the newest student in her class, being teased by two of her classmates. Later, Anna joins the boy at the edge of a lake. Shun shows a computer game he is developing in, after playing a game, the girl spots a scar on his hand and asks if the boy is okay. Shun says yes and Anna says he can talk to her whenever he needs to. He even offers to introduce the boy to the city, as he has just moved, then she gets up and invites him to go home together. Shun asks her to go ahead, as he still needed to make some adjustments to the game's schedule. A few minutes after the girl leaves, Tukuro appears to harass the boy. Shun tries to get up and go home, but the delinquent knocks him down and takes his computer. The boy manages to get it back, but Tukuro didn't like his attitude one bit. A few hours later, the two walk through the forest together and Tukuro uses a cart to transport a cardboard box. His two friends, Takeshi and Mika, were waiting for him outside an abandoned reform school, where the boy intended to hide the box. They invade the place and Shun accompanies them. Anna appears shortly thereafter and secretly follows them. Before entering the juvie, they meet Hiroshi. The boy went to that place to carry out research on the metamorphosis of butterflies. Despite being very weird, the boy is fascinated by insects and his main hobby is studying everything about them. As they were talking, the main door of the reformatory opens and Takuro enters with the box. He calls Mika to help him get rid of it and asks the others to wait outside. However, Hiroshi is extremely curious and decides to investigate the place. Takeshi hears a noise outside and closes the door. Then he and Shun go in search of their classmates. Shortly after, Anna appears and enters the building. The door closes and all the teenagers receive a call from an unknown number, despite there being no signal in that place. Takeshi answers but doesn't hear anyone's voice. Anna tries to open the door to leave, however, all exits are locked. The two boys were in a room when they hear a noise in the hallway. Takeshi turns on his flashlight and goes there to see what was going on. Shun knocks over a vase of flowers that was on the table and his colleague is stunned. He tries to open the door, but Anna informs him that it is impossible to get out of that building. Shun goes after him and yells his name, but this only causes more despair and Takeshi flees to the second floor. Upon finding his friend, Shun asks her to leave, as he is sensing something very bad. However, as they were trapped in that place, they decide to go after the other students to try to come up with a plan to escape. While investigating, Hiroshi finds a broken plate filled with saliva. This makes him worried as he realizes that something or someone has been there recently. Meanwhile, Mika and Takuro arrive in the carpet room, where the basement entrance is. The boy goes down the stairs and his friend waits for him upstairs. At that moment, she hears a noise outside and leaves to investigate. Upon arriving in one of the rooms, she sees a window closed by some wooden slats, so she decides to look to find out what's on the other side. However, what the girl sees terrifies her. The demonic creature was looking at her. Mika escapes the room and hides in the pantry, where she is found by Hiroshi. She tells him that she saw a monster and together they go to another room. The couple find a closet and, upon opening the door, discover that Takeshi has been hiding there all along. The boy starts to complain saying that he has something chasing him and it was all Takuro's fault. However, Mika interrupts him and says that if the boy continues talking about that subject, Takuro would kill him. Hiroshi asks Takeshi to come out of the closet and help them find a way out of that place, but the coward intends to stay there until his parents come looking for him. Hiroshi then promises that as soon as they leave, they will let Takeshi's parents know where he is so they can pick him up. As they leave the room, they find Anna and Shun. Together they go after Takuro. And suddenly, Takeshi gets another call, which he believes is from his parents. The boy answers the phone and reveals his location, but the call is interrupted. The boy hears Takuro's voice calling for him outside and opens the closet door. However, he is surprised to discover that it was actually a blue demon. His colleagues hear his screams and come back to help him, however, it was too late. Takeshi was pulled into the room and eaten alive. Hiroshi tries to go after him, but is unable to enter the room. When the door finally opens, the teens find only the remains of their friend. At this point, they realize they need to leave the building immediately. The problem is that the key to the entrance door was taken by Takuro and only Mika knows where he is. Anna asks Mika to reveal the boy's location, but the girl doesn't want to, as she is afraid of being killed by him. 
Hiroshi asks what they are hiding and what is the real reason they went to Juvie. Scared and not knowing what to do, Mika runs away and Hiroshi goes after her. Anna stays behind and Shun asks if he is dreaming, as everything that was happening was exactly the same as the game he played. A while later, Mika arrives in the basement and informs Takuro of Takeshi's death. She asks her friend to accompany her out of that place, but the boy thinks the girl is mocking him and asks her to leave. Before leaving, Mika steals his key ring and runs to the front door. At the library, Shun asks Anna to pull out a specific book at the same time he pulls out another. As he did so, a fake book fell to the ground, and inside it was a key, just like Shun designed it in his game. Meanwhile, Mika tries to open the door, but not even the right key is able to unlock it. The girl hears a noise and walks silently. Suddenly, the door starts to slowly open and Mika hides. Hiroshi calls out for his friend, but the girl cannot answer him because if she does, she will be found by the monster. However, even in silence, the creature manages to locate her through her scent and devours her completely. Shun uses the key he found in the library to open the door to another room and starts looking for the next clue. The boy finds a secret passage and they both head to the piano room. After entering, they hear Mika's voice calling for Shun. The boy runs to open the door, but Anna asks him not to because the one who was calling for him was not Mika. The girl says that Mika wouldn't call for him and Shun is confused, but soon they discover that it really wasn't Mika but the blue demon that haunted that reform school. The door is destroyed and the two teenagers need to escape from that dark creature. Shun needs to open the chains of a chest and get the cloth that is inside to clean the piano, only then that step would be completed. After doing so, they run through the rooms and Anna finds Mika's remains. Shun asks how Anna knew that Mika wouldn't call him and the girl says he looks a lot like her little brother. Anna says her brother used to be bullied and she knew it, but when she asked what was going on, he just smiled and said it was okay. As they were talking, Hiroshi appears and sees his friend's destroyed body. He is already hopeless, but Anna claims there is a way to get out of this place alive. After cleaning the piano, they find the code to open the safe where the second key is hidden. The trio then head to the tool room, where they must open the rug and find the door to the basement. Upon arriving there, they are surprised to find that the basement was already open. They go downstairs and when Hiroshi turns on the light, he is attacked by Takuro, who gives him several blows to his head with a piece of wood. The boy faints and the delinquent asks what they were doing there. Anna states that if Takuro didn't leave that place with them, he would die. Then she says that, in fact, Takuro deserved to die for being one of the reasons her brother killed himself. Furthermore, he was also responsible for Shun's death. Hearing this, Shun opens the box that Takuro had taken to the building and finds his own dead body. At that moment, he remembers what really happened by the lake. After snatching his computer from Takuro's hands, the delinquent delivered a single blow to his head, which was enough to cause his death. However, Shun believed he was still alive and only Anna could see the manifestation of his soul. But now that he has remembered what really happened, Shun realizes that he is dead and disappears. Takuro says that now that Anna knows what he's done, he won't be able to let her get out of that place alive. But, luckily for the girl, the blue demon appears in the room and devours the boy. Anna wakes Hiroshi and they leave that place together, however, the creature goes after them. Still stunned by the blow he took to the head, Hiroshi is unable to run and asks Anna to flee without him. After seeing her friend being devoured, the girl crosses the halls in search of a safe place. Anna enters one of the rooms and locks the door. On the other side, she hears her brother's voice screaming her name. There is no other door or window through which she can escape. This time, Anna is cornered. Then she remembers what Shun said when he first introduced her to the game. The boy says that anyone with enough determination could run away. When you are cornered, opening the door, even knowing the monster is on the other side, is proof of your determination. Remembering this, Anna gets up and opens the bedroom door. In that instant, she returns to reality and realizes that everything that happened in the reformatory happened exclusively in her head. None of it was real. The girl returns to the moment when she was sitting next to Shun by the lake. Anna vents to her new friend saying that she couldn't save her brother, but she will do anything to save him. We will then move on to the events of Ao Oni 2.0. A few months later, a couple goes to the abandoned reform school. There were rumors that monsters lived inside. Despite being quite scared, the girl continues walking through the building, as her boyfriend promises that if anything happens, he will protect her with his life. However, seconds later, the boy is captured and dragged away. A short time later, the creature approaches the young woman and devours her. In the library, Takeshi sees some pictures on his phone, and it is possible to see Takuro bullying Shun. Mika says the boy hasn't been to school for the last few days. Takuro takes his friend's phone and finds a picture of him with Naoki, Anna's late brother. He deletes the picture and the next photo is of the abandoned reformatory. 
Takeshi reveals that he wants to go there, but people were saying that the place was cursed by a blue monster. Takuro then invites them to go there and make a live stream inside the building. Over the weekend, Anna decided to go over to Shun's house to see how the boy is doing. On the way, the girl meets Hiroshi. The boy reveals that he helped Shun complete the game and was impressed by the boy's programming skill. At that moment, a rare blue butterfly flies in front of Hiroshi and he starts chasing it. After walking for a few minutes, they arrive at the juvie and find the school's most hated trio of friends. Hiroshi says that Takuro looked scared and asks what happened. The boy pushes him away and says it's none of his business. When he gets up, Hiroshi spots the butterfly again and goes after it. Takeshi breaks the chains with his pliers and the trio enter the building. They start the live and, after turning on the light, they realize that Hiroshi is also inside. The teenagers hear the sound of a plate breaking and Hiroshi goes to see what it is. Takeshi is scared and tries to leave the building, but the door is locked. Takuro then orders the boy to continue the transmission. While recording his friend, Takeshi spots a demon on the other side of the door. Then he screams and runs in despair. In the kitchen, Hiroshi finds a broken plate lying on the floor, but he still decides to continue exploring the place. As he climbs the stairs, the boy finds Takeshi's phone. The boy was looking for a place to hide and slips into a closet. Once at Shun's house, Anna looks at the computer screen and finds the game the boy created. She is surprised to see a character like Takuro. While looking for Takeshi, Mika finds a screwdriver inside the bathroom sink and intends to take the tool with her in case she needs to defend herself. In the room where they are there are some lockers and Takuro decides to open it in an attempt to find his friend. At that moment, the boy is surprised by the blue demon, who was inside waiting for him. Upon seeing that creature, the boy immediately flees, leaving Mika alone behind. The girl tries to catch up with him, but Takuro is faster. The creature wastes no time and soon sets off after them. After going down the stairs, the girl falls to the ground and is unable to continue her escape. So, she prepares to attack the monster with the tool she found in the sink. Mika lands a blow on the demon and ends up being hit by a jet of blue blood. However, that wasn't enough to stop him from devouring the girl. Meanwhile, Shun tracks his colleagues every move through his computer. Suddenly, Hiroshi appears on your screen. He continued the live stream that Takeshi had started. During the broadcast, the boy informs that four high school students, including him, are trapped in the reform school with a monster and ends up asking for the help of whoever is watching him. As he descends the stairs, Hiroshi spots the blue creature eating its first meal of the day. In that instant, Shun realizes that his game has come true and everything that was happening on his computer was a reflection of what was happening in the juvie. The problem is that now he's lost control of the game and can't interfere with anything at all. Apparently, his colleagues will have to fend for themselves to escape that place. After devouring Mika, the demon climbs the stairs and tries to capture Hiroshi. The boy runs desperately through the abandoned building and ends up stumbling on a pile of rubble. During the incident, a sharp object pierces his belly, causing a serious injury. However, Hiroshi does not give up and continues to fight to survive. While walking through the halls, the boy is found by Takuro. The boy helps his colleague tend to the wound, but Hiroshi cannot forgive him for leaving Mika behind. Takuro is also regretful of his attitude and, in a fit of rage, while dropping all the objects that were in front of him, he ends up finding an important prop. As Hiroshi had helped Shun develop that game, he had already realized what was happening. After revealing to Takuro that they were inside a game, they hatch a plan to get out of that place. Hiroshi says that there are three floors in the building, however, there is a hidden fourth floor, where a fatal bug has been implanted. Upon accessing this bug, they could restart the game and go back to the time before they entered Juvie. That way, theoretically, they could prevent Mika's death. In his room, Shun says that he created that game so he could eliminate Takuro as many times as he wanted, since the boy always bullied him. However, now the boy regrets having created that game because, because of him, his colleagues were really dying. Seeing her friend's despair, Anna promises that she will stand by her side to help him fix the situation. The two boys begin their plan to end that game. They head down to the basement, but soon discover that the door is locked. While Hiroshi looks for the key, Takuro tries to find Takeshi. Upon entering one of the rooms, he sees his friend completely covered in blue paint. Takeshi says he found a bucket of paint and used it to cover his body in an attempt to look like the monster. That way, the creature could think the boy is like him and wouldn't attack him. After hearing this bizarre explanation, Takuro pulls his friend out and asks him to accompany him. However, Takeshi refuses to go as he believes that Takuro plans to use him as bait, as he did with Mika. Taken by hatred, Takeshi vents saying that Takuro is the real monster of that place. He says that, in fact, he always knew that and that everyone hates Takuro, however, they don't say anything because they don't want to end up like Naoki. 
Upon facing the truth, Takuro decides to leave and leaves Takeshi alone. The boy hides back in the closet and hears the sound of something approaching. Suddenly, the monster opens the closet and the boy tries to keep still to go unnoticed. Apparently, his plan works and the creature closes the door. At that moment, Takeshi breathes a sigh of relief, but when he looks to the side, he finds Naoki's ghost looking at him. The boy gets a big fright and runs out of the closet, but the monster was still in that room. This time, Takeshi can't escape and has his head devoured. After finding the basement key, Hiroshi and Takuro meet and make their way to a tunnel. Suddenly, the blue demon appears and starts chasing them. The boys escape and enter a room protected by a metal gate, as if it were a cell. The monster tries to enter, but soon gives up, as, as programmed by Shun, the demon cannot read that code. However, there is another blue monster inside that room and, although it looks harmless, its bite can be fatal. As the creature is kind of slow and has difficulty getting around, the duo can dodge it easily, but Hiroshi knows that the difficulty of that phase will still increase. Takuro climbs on a scaffold and comes across another monster, only now they're getting bigger and bigger. After going down the stairs, they find the two little blue demons that, after merging, transform into a single, even bigger and more dangerous monster. Hiroshi takes advantage of the moment to escape and Takuro is disappointed. However, the boy understands him, after all, he had done the same with Mika. But to the boy's surprise, Hiroshi returns and, just as his colleague is about to be devoured, he knocks over a giant concrete structure capable of crushing the monster. After getting rid of that creature, they walk for a few more minutes and find the key that will be used to open the fourth floor door and restart the game. The problem is that they need to know the password to get it out of the box. Hiroshi uses the item found by Takuro to discover the code and release the key. Now that they've managed to get everything they need, the duo head upstairs to reach the fourth floor. However, Hiroshi's wound is opening and the boy can barely walk. Takuro helps him and they manage to reach their final destination. Realizing that his classmates are trying to restart the game, Shun takes his computer and runs to the juvie, along with Anna, to try to help them. On the fourth floor, there are two doors, one of which would allow them to restart the game. However, when they were about to complete their mission, the blue demon appears and Hiroshi asks Takuro to go without him, as the boy would not be able to run. A short time later, the monster catches up to Hiroshi and he too is devoured. Now Takuro has the lives of all his colleagues in his hands. If he manages to restart the game, they could all revive. The boy tries to open one of the doors, but it is locked. Suddenly, he hears Shun's voice asking him to open the Omega door, which is on the other side of that room. Shun states that doing so will reset the game. However, for Takuro to reach the other side, he will need to go through a major obstacle. The blue demon has just devoured Hiroshi and runs towards the boy. Takuro also runs towards the monster as he realizes that facing it is the only way to win that game. As he approaches the creature, Takuro throws himself to the ground and manages to get under its legs. He is determined to get to the other side, and when he opens the door, a white light floods the room and the game restarts. The boy returns to the moment before he entered the building and is thrilled to find his friends again. He asks the girl for forgiveness for having abandoned her and, even without understanding anything, Mika hugs him. However, Hiroshi was not there. Anna says that he went after the rare butterfly and Takuro is worried that the boy has already entered the reform school. The boy runs desperate to try to find him, but is relieved to see his friend leaving the building. Then everyone decides to return to their homes. Later, Takeshi returns to Juvie alone. While taking a picture of the place, he is surprised again by Naoki's ghost. Soon after, the blue demon emerges from behind the building. Apparently, something made him even bigger and managed to get out of Juvie. Has the game created by Shun now expanded to the entire city? What would you do to survive the blue demon's attack? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.